today we're going to consider what definitely is not church. All right, let's put this up. Uh, we're going to look at what is definitely not for church. The church is not the building. It's not Presbyterianism. It's not even the stuff we do at Sunday services. Oh, crazy, isn't it? But the Bible is very, very clear. Church is us, the people, people who've heard about and responded to what Jesus has done in his life, in his teaching, in his ministry. Yes, in his death, his burial, his resurrection and ascension back to heaven. The church is the saved people of God throughout all of history across all nations. Our Sunday gatherings, what they are, is they're a local expression of God's church. We are God's people under God's good rule. And so because of that, there are things which are definitely not for church, things which must never, ever be present in God's family. Okay, they must never be in his people, in church. Instead, we are encouraged to wake up and walk in love as children of light. So we're going to walk in love and walk as children of light. That's what we're reading today from Ephesians. And we'll hear more about that later. Again, thanks for joining us today, guys. Uh, you're here with us on Zoom, and you might be watching this later in a recording. Welcome. If this is the first time you've met me, my name's Samuel, and it's great to have you with us. We love having visitors join us at Warhope Prezi. We are a people who seek to love and serve God. And so we're going to read God's Word, the Bible. Uh, we think about how it applies to our lives, and we respond to God by talking to Him. Uh, we respond to God through our prayer, through our songs. And we also, look, we want to not just you know, listen to God and, and respond to God, we also want to encourage each other as followers of Jesus. Here at Warhope Prezi, we're all about Jesus, and we're glad that you've joined us. Let's, uh, let's pause now and talk to God in prayer. Let's do that. Our Lord, you are good. As we sing and pray, as we listen to your word and the Bible read and taught, please help us to grow in our knowledge of you and in our love for you. Please help us to be shaped by what, what you teach us, that we might better love and serve each other as we seek to honour you. As we read and reflect on what you teach us in the Bible, may we have hearts that are teachable and minds which are quick to learn. God our Father, you are good. We pray these things confident in the hope that we have only in Jesus. Amen. Now we're going to now have our Bible reading today and David is going to present that for us. I'll bring him up on the screen. Thank you, sir. Be imitators of God, therefore, as dearly loved children and live a life of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But among you there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or of any kind of impurity or of greed, because these are improper for God's holy people. Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. For of this you can be sure, no immoral, impure or greedy person, such a man is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore do not be partners with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness and truth, and find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for it is light that makes everything visible. This is why it is said, Wake up, O sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Thank you, sir. Well, I have a confession to make. I'm, I'm kind of cheating a little bit today. Um, yeah, but don't we all like a little bit of two for the price of one? I'm cheating in that today's talk is really two parts. 
You see, Paul in his letter, he started off the first three chapters by talking about how important Jesus is for us, the church, for the church overall. But then he spends the next three chapters put, putting those things that we've been taught into practice. And so he says a whole series of, therefore, walk like this. So as you're reading the next three chapters, you're on the lookout for these, these therefore statements. Therefore, walk like this. So far, we've had, therefore, walk worthy of the calling you've received and be united in the gospel truth. That's the first thing God's people are to be after they've realized what Jesus has done. Walk worthy of the calling. Be united in the gospel truth. Therefore, he says later on, you to no longer walk as the nations do. Don't be like the Gentiles, the nations around us. We've got to be different. We've got to dress ourselves with the fashion of holiness. We talked about that last week, didn't we? These proper attitudes for church. And in today, yeah, I'm sneaking in two more therefores. Okay, so let's, uh, Paul's third therefore. Therefore, walk in love. We are to imitate God. We're to reflect what God is like. Not those who are coming under God's judgment. Not those who don't have any place in God's eternal kingdom. We are to walk in love. We're to imitate God. And then he gives us another one, number four. Therefore, Paul says, walk as children of light. We should have nothing to do with darkness of this world. Any, anything to do with the darkness of this world, ooh, keep away from it. Don't have anything to do with it. Because these things, wow, they are definitely not for church. In the first three chapters, Paul's taught about, you know, God taking us from death to life, from being far from God and being brought near. And more recently, he's just finished saying that, well, believers, we're to be kind and generous and compassionate to one another. We're to be gracious because God was gracious to us in Jesus. And so therefore, to our reading today, our verses 1 and 2, we are to walk in love. We're to imitate God. Again, Paul reminds his readers, we've been adopted into God's family by grace through faith in Christ Jesus. And what, what should little kids do if they've been adopted into God's family? Well, kids are meant to be like their parents. And we too, brought into God's family, should do our best to imitate God, our Father. A father who loves us, each one of us. Get this, the, the, the language actually implies that he loves us like we are each his only child. He wants us to love each of us like an only child. Now, I haven't made a mistake here. Um, the word beloved actually communicates the idea that God loves each one of us as if we were his only precious child. God's love is that big, he can love all of us that much. And it's in, it's, it's in love, it's in our love that we're to imitate God. It's why we're to walk in love. Our life, our, our way of life, the way we do things, the way we talk, the way we think, it all should be influenced by a desire to love. And what does that love look like? Well, we've got a big brother, don't we? We can check out what our big brother's doing and see how he's doing it. Jesus Christ. He is the one who shows us what the love of God is like. Jesus Christ, the eternal divine Son, who loved us so much that he gave himself up for us. Jesus took on our debt of guilt. He took it on our behalf. On our behalf, he suffered the penalty we deserve for not giving God the worship, the obedience, the love that's due to him alone. If you think about it, to love us, cost God a great deal. It's this costly, other person focused, generous, selfless love that we are to walk in. Hey kids, that, that gives me an idea. Get, uh, come up with your first page, right? And I want you to title it, Love God's Love. And underneath, I want you to draw a big bright cloud in the sky and it's raining. But it's not normal rain. It's not normal water that's raining. It's raining lots and lots of little love hearts. And there you are standing under this big storm of love hearts and you're getting drenched with love, God's love from above. And don't worry, you can draw these love hearts in any colour you want. Blue, pink, yellow, orange, green, red. It doesn't matter. In fact, 
There's just so much of God's love just pouring down on us like a big heavy rain, come up with many colors and different types of love hearts you can. Just It's God's love. It's fantastic. And there you are getting drenched in God's love from above, but you're not alone. I want you to draw somebody next to you. And, you, and both of you have caught some of the love falling from God in heaven. And guess what you're doing with that love? Yeah, that's right. You're sharing the love that God's given to you with each other. So draw your friend and yourself giving each other a love heart you caught from heaven and you're sharing God's love with each other. You see, we've been so loved by God in Jesus that this is the reason we should love each other. It's why we should want to love each other. How can I get the energy to love that person I don't like or that, that other person I don't have much to do with who's got different tastes or different appreciations? Well, remember, we've been loved by God and that helps us to love each other. So a big cloud, it's raining all different love hearts and two people, have, they've caught some of the love of God and they're sharing it with each other. That'll be pretty cool. All right, thanks, kids. You see, as a people who are to imitate God in our walk of love, there are some things which clearly, clearly, they're not for church. They're not for God's people. Check out verse 3. There's to be no improper behavior for the saints. That, that's us, right? People saved by Christ Jesus to be God's holy people. That's who the saints are. Uh, there's no improper behavior for us. Sexual immorality, impure, twisted morality. That's what it means to be impure, to have a, a twisted morality. Or greedy attitudes. These things are, are to be so distant from our church family that it never even needs to come up in conversation. Why, why talk about it? It's nowhere to be found. Now, sexual immorality is when we step outside of God's good plans within marriage between a husband and a wife. Impurity is when our actions and behaviours, well, they start to reflect the values of this world rather than a desire to obey our Heavenly Father. And greed, oh, it's greed. It's basically an attitude driven by extreme selfishness. A desire to care for number one, even at the expense of someone else. Or simply to only meet my own needs with no regard to others. These things, these attitudes, these behaviours, they are not for church. They're not even to be heard amongst us because not, not because we're hiding them, brushing them under the carpet. And it's not that we pretend that they're not among us, but because they're, well, they're not among us. We don't hear about it because we don't need to talk about it. But the reality is greed and selfishness, well, they, these things don't always express themselves in sexual immorality or impurity, but sometimes even the words that we speak. Verse 4. Obscene, foolish, crude talk. Yeah. It, sure, it might get a laugh. It might get us attention by the shock it causes, but it doesn't build up. This kind of speaking pulls our minds, our thoughts away from God, from what is healthy and what is good. It takes us away from our call to walk in love. Instead, crass or foolish talk encourages us to to imitate this, this broken world rather than imitating our Heavenly Father. Sarcastic, negative humour. Think about it. It relies on negativity. It relies on, on pulling people down. And as Christ's church, as the people being built up into the house of God, we must never do anything to pull each other down, especially for the sake of a laugh or to get a little bit back on them because they you know, didn't do what we wanted or... You know, because we don't appreciate something about them. Like, no. And I have to admit, I, I've never heard swearing or crass talk in our gatherings, and that's fantastic. But I know personally how easy it is to chuck out a quick joke at someone else's expense. You know, it's so Australian. But it's not Christian. It's not for our church. Instead, let's... Instead of, of, of using you know, humour or, or language to pull each other down, what, what does it the Scriptures tell us to do? We give thanks, don't we? Instead, let's give thanks to our spouse or for our spouse. Let's give thanks for our children. Let's give thanks for our elderly. Let's give thanks for whatever's happening that is good, that builds up the people of God in their faith. 
Let's build each other up. Because if we're not being built up, we're missing out. Don't be deceived. Verse 5. Regardless of what the world says, there is a cost. We can't think that we can live without regard to the good, good, rule, good rule of God and expect to have a place in his kingdom. All right? We can't expect to, to agree with a world that says, oh, keep your religion private. You know, it, just, it doesn't really matter. We, we cannot think that we can ignore the king and say we're in the kingdom. Yeah, all right. We do know that Christians, people who love and serve the Lord, we are imperfect. We still battle with sin. We still stumble. But that's not a justification. The reality, just the reality of us still being this side of heaven. Yes, we are made new in Christ. It's happened once and for all when we responded to God's call, but we still need to work hard at being God's kingdom people. That We still need to work hard at being the people God has called us to be. But a person who says they follow the king wants to serve the king. So yeah, we're not saved by our good works. We're saved by what Jesus has done. But once we're saved, we now know we're in God's kingdom. We're safe and secure there. But we now need to live as people in God's kingdom. And if we make a habit, this is what it means here in verses 5 and 6, if we make a habit of not serving the king, if we make a habit of demonstrating we don't care about what the king says, well, it demonstrates our loyalty is not with God, but to this world and its values. And when we do that, we're demonstrating by what we do, what we really believe. That in fact, we are not members of Christ's kingdom. We will miss out. Our faith is not real faith. That's a big call, isn't it? It's what we hear in the, in the book of James. Show me your faith through your works. We can't just say we love God and then not serve him. We can't say that he's our king and ignore his commands over our lives. If we're not working at serving the king, we've got to ask serious questions of ourselves. Do I really have a king if I'm not serving him? And so we're told people who practice this kind of behavior, sexual immorality, impure in our morals and the way we think, if we're selfish and greedy, we're not caring about others, well, that, that means that we don't have any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ. We will miss out. If we've given ourselves to the Lordship of Christ, if God is our Father, we will want to imitate our Heavenly Father and walk in love and generosity, not in selfishness, not in the values of this world. Don't be deceived. God will judge. Hey, kids, I've got another page for you. I want you to give this page the title True Kingdom Kids. And underneath, I want you to stand yourself standing before Jesus. And, and, and there you are standing like a tall soldier and you're saluting Jesus and you're shouting out, yes, sir. You see, if we belong to Jesus' kingdom, we'll want to obey what Jesus tells us to do. We won't get it right all the time. We won't be perfect. We'll fall over and make mistakes. But we'll want to serve King Jesus because he is our king. But if we constantly ignore Jesus, we don't care about what he says. We don't care about what we do and what it shows other people about what we believe. If we're like that, it shows that we're not really soldiers of King Jesus. However, if we, if once we are part of God's kingdom, which is a gift, <laughs> once we're part of God's kingdom, we need to do our best to serve and obey him. So there's King Jesus, he's got a, a crown on, he's got a royal robe, and there we are standing in front of King Jesus saying, yes, sir, we're delighted to serve the king because our king has saved us and given us new life. All right, thanks, kids. Guys, we just mustn't fall into the deadly trap that we can be saved but ignore the good rule of our Saviour. One is a contradiction of the other. We mustn't fall into the deadly trap of ignoring the fact that God is a great and just God but also a terrifying judge. Check out verse 6. Because the world, the world tells us, doesn't it, rebellion against God is fun. I mean, honestly, we make jokes about the fact that God even exists. The world just like, God, whatever. I mean, don't be such a fool. 
Ignore him. Don't worry about it. He's not even real. Freedom is doing whatever we want any old time. We can do whatever we like. But these arguments of the world, I tell you what, they're empty. They're based on an illusion that puts the self at the center of the universe. Now, I know I'm special, but I'm not that special. No one person is at the center of the universe unless you're the divine creator of the universe. God is the foundation of reality. He made it. And he's told us he's coming back again to judge the living and the dead. And his wrath, his anger is coming on those who disobey him. On those who have not turned to Jesus in obedient trust. Those who have put their back on the king God has put over us. And so Paul gives us another, therefore. He really wants to reinforce how we are to separate ourselves from any kind of darkness. Instead, we are to walk. How? as children of light. Verse 7. Don't, guys, don't do it. Don't partner with them. (laughs) Don't participate with those who have no inheritance in Christ's kingdom. Don't join in with those who are coming under God's wrath. doesn't matter how rich they are, how popular they are, how famous they are, how young they are, how beautiful they are, how, you know, doesn't matter. Don't do it. They're heading for a fall. They're heading for a crash. You don't want to be attached to these people. Instead, we are to walk as children of light. What they're doing is not a smart life choice. Because remember, we were once darkness, but have now been made light in Christ Jesus. Why go back to a place of spiritual death when Christ has loved us, done so much for us on the cross to make us alive with him? To say we were once darkness here in the reading, um, you know, verse 8, for you were once darkness, to say this means that we were held sway by our rebellious nature. You know, we weren't even able to see our desperate need, the fact that we were totally lost. Before Christ, we are alone in the dark, far from God. But in Christ, we are now light and we're able to walk as children of the light. And those who persist in immorality and purity and greed, they're going to miss out on the kingdom of God. But those who are producing gospel fruit, growing in goodness and righteous deeds and in the truth, they will be able to test what is pleasing to the Lord, they will be able to see. As we put into practice what we know of the truth, well, as we read and study the Bible, as as the Holy Spirit uses it to shape us, as we apply it to our lives, something starts to change. See, I, I didn't know that exercise was particularly good. I knew it in my head. You're meant to exercise. Yeah, 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 yeah. People keep telling me. And then I'd exercise. It would ache. I would ache for, I'd ache for days and I'd just feel smashed. I don't feel well. I don't like it. But if I know it's good for me and I push through it and I continue to exercise, I mean, the first day I went for a run, about three weeks ago, After ages of not running, my knees ached, my hips ached, my calves ached, my ankle ached. I had a headache, I think. And basically, I felt like I was in shock for the rest of the day. I felt ill. But after about three days, yeah, that kind of sense of shock started not being there as much. And I could, oh, man, I could actually finish this. I might go a little bit harder. And then my 20 minutes went down to 19 minutes. And then after about a week, it went down to eight. I can do this. I didn't have to stop. And after a while, my heart was saying, you know what? You're a runner. Run. It's good for you. It's in the practicing of doing good things that our heart gets changed and we realize, hey, this is actually good for us. And as we put into practice what we know of God's truth, as we read and study the Bible, the Holy Spirit will shape us. It might be hard. It might be challenging. It it might... Uh, it might have, we might have to let go of things we really love but are actually not good for us. But as we do it, we're changed and we begin to taste and smell and see that it is good, that God's way is good. And over time we get better at working out how to please the Lord Jesus in all our circumstances. Now, now so far we've, we've thought about keeping ourselves in order, which is good. We've got to start with the self. Jesus says, take the plank out of your own eye before you look for a speck of dust in your brother's eye. I mean, you know, 
get your own house in order before you look to help somebody else. But that's actually still important. We still not only need to walk in the light, we need to help each other say no to the darkness as well. And so we don't participate, but we expose darkness. Check out verse 11. Now, sure, Paul tells the church again, he does it, he's, this is key, all right? Don't keep doing what the world does. We've got to say no to the fruitless works of darkness. So once again, don't do it, guys. But more than that, we need to help each other say no to rebellious acts, no to rebellious attitudes, no to the way the world sees things, and yes, to the way God sees things. Um, if we're to become aware of the attitudes and behaviours of the world creeping back into our own church family, we've got to shine a light on it. We need to expose it and say, you know what? This is not who we are as children of the light. Now, as much as I find it intensely uncomfortable, if you see me starting to prioritise what the world does, if you find my humour starts to take on that sarcastic or demeaning edge, please, for the love of God, expose it. Shine a light on it. Speak the gospel truth to me in love and rebuke me. A loving brother or sister will risk the friendship to make sure I don't miss out on inheriting the kingdom of Christ. I'd much rather be embarrassed by the exposure of any darkness within me than to be condemned by the great divine judge. Brothers and sisters, will we love our brother and sister in Christ enough? Enough that we would risk their goodwill, their affection, in order to save them from God's wrath? Or... Would we be willing to hear our loving brother and sister who might bumble, mumble, stumble as they, as they try, to, try to shine gospel light into our life to expose any darkness within? Would we be willing to hear that? Because it, it probably won't be perfect. They, they might Sure, they might have been able to find a better way of saying it. They might have found a better time, but they are loving us when they do that. Will we bless them, thank them, praise them for loving us so much that they would risk our anger, our embarrassment in order to call us back into obedience to our Lord Jesus Christ? We should. Because we don't want to be like those who are still in darkness. That way only leads to exclusion from the kingdom and judgment on the last day. Brothers and sisters, have the courage to speak gospel truth and shine a light on the rebellion of any other member of our church family. Do it lovingly. Do it. There's going to be no perfect time, by the way. There's going to be no perfect words, and it's not going to go down perfectly every time. But let's love them enough to take the risk to shine gospel light into their life. Hey, what are you doing here? Are you really prioritizing what God prioritizes? And more than that, Let's welcome that from each other. And as that person tries to correct us and expose it, and even though it wasn't perfect and sure they didn't get all the right words right and maybe they might have overstated something, whatever it was, let's be willing to hear correction from our brothers and sisters so that we too might demonstrate we are of the light. Oh, hey kids, um, last page for you. Oh, was it? Did I? Where have I got it? Have I got that next one? Oh, no. Where's my last one with the kids? Here we go. I must have skipped through it somehow. Here's the one. The last one is true love. And underneath, oh, dear. Looks like you've stacked your bike. Man, you've had a huge crash. Your bike's up a tree. Its wheels are all bent. There's a dent in the tree that, just a minute, looks a whole lot. Uh, that dent looks about the same shape as your helmet. Ouch. And there you are, you, you scratched up your knees, your hands, there's bruises up your shins, and you're not worried about your scratches. I wonder why. Ah, uh, yeah, I see. You've broken your arm. Now, that hurts. And there you are, you're holding your arm tight, trying to stop the pain, and, and you know what? It's okay. 
it doesn't look okay because you, your head's sore and your arms are busted up, but it's okay because that's, that's mum or dad. And, and you know what they're saying? They're standing next to you and saying, let me help you up. Now, is it going to hurt to stand up? Yeah, probably. So why, would, why do they want you to get up? Yeah, that's right. They want to take you to hospital to get you fixed up, right? Sometimes, as followers of Jesus, we crash. We might get into a bad habit of swearing or telling lies or, or being selfish with what we have. Perhaps we've been tempted to laugh along with others when someone's being teased. When that happens, it's very helpful to have someone else who will risk upsetting us and say, hey, man, that's not cool. That's not what King Jesus would want us to do. As followers of Jesus, we want people to help us when we've crashed. Even if it's embarrassing, even if we get angry about it. But we don't want to embarrass Jesus by being unloving. We don't want to stay crashed. It's okay when someone says, come on, let me pick you up. It's going to hurt. But let's be like Jesus. So there you are. Your bike's up in the tree. There's a head-sized dent in the tree. And there you're on the ground. You're holding your arm. And mum or dad, they saying, come on, let me help you up. It's going to hurt, but it's for our good because they're going to take us to get fixed. And we need to make sure that when someone says to us, hey, that's not good. Don't do that. That's not what King Jesus would want. Let's say, thank you. I want to be like King Jesus. I want to be a good soldier for Jesus. Thanks, kids. Oh. But we know, don't we? N not all deeds of darkness are easy to see. Verse 12. When we participate in the dark deeds of the world, as followers of Christ, we're often embarrassed. We're ashamed of it, aren't we? We keep it secret. We know that we should be different. We know what's better. We know better, but... We're not smarter than we we don't know better because we're smarter than anyone else, but because God's He's revealed to us a better way, His way. But the problem with secrets is that they they have power over us. Because we're we're ashamed of our moral failure, so we don't talk about it. And if we don't talk about it and we hide it, we don't confess it. And in keeping it secret and unconfessed, it has power over us. It's so hard to break a private, secret habit of darkness. We need it exposed to the light. We need to invite our church family to shine gospel light in our lives, to invite them in. We need to know our church family well enough so we can confess our sin and trust that we'll find forgiveness, love and godly help. And what makes everything visible? Light. The gospel truth. Truth spoken in love to build each other up in our trust and obedience to the Lord. We need to allow our church family to speak the gospel of the truth into our lives. To expose not only the rebellion behind words and deeds in the open, but also the secret deeds we're ashamed of. And when we hear that gospel truth, may God give us the courage to fess up, to fall on God's mercy and accept the help from those God has given to us. Help that we might begin once again to walk as children of light. So guys, don't pontificate, but dazzle. Yeah, all right. That, that, that heading's dodgy. It, okay, it's pretty bad. But I couldn't help keeping the P's and the D's going. Look at the list. Isn't that a beautiful, the P's and the D's? Anyway. Uh, Paul, he finishes up with what's likely a part of a hymn sung by early believers. It, it's a saying familiar to them, but it's not actually a quotation from the Old Testament. Sure, we, a couple of people try to mash different texts together, but it's probably just a saying they know, maybe an, an, a hymn that they used to sing. But Paul, he's going to use it because it just sums up beautifully these ideas. Get up, sleeper, and rise from the dead. It seems that in the Ephesian church that there are those who have gone back to sleep, as it were. But when you're going back to sleep in your faith, it's like going back to the dead. Come on, you've been brought from death to life in Christ. Let go of the old self. Let go of the dead deeds of darkness. Wake up and Christ will what? Yeah, he will shine on you. Not judgment, but belonging. No longer a foreigner, but a member of God's household. Not, not spiritually dead, but made eternally alive in Christ. 
Brothers and sisters, let's not fall asleep. Let's not allow this world to shape our thinking and our actions. The world's thoughts and deeds, they're not for church. Be warned. If we're constantly shining the light of Christ on our lives and on the lives of our church family, if we're not doing that, we're falling asleep. Let Christ shine on us. May we give each other permission to shine the gospel truth into our lives. May we be willing to risk our own standing in order to grow a brother or sister in the Lord. May we walk in love. May we walk as children of light. Let's pray. God, you are good. You are life. You are light. And you have told us who you are through your word over many, many generations. And more than this, you have shown us who you are in your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus, who gave up his life for us, he might take our debt of guilt so that we might be reborn with him into eternal new life. Father, help us to say no to this world, the darkness of this world. Help us to love the world, yes, but to say no to its darkness, to not allow its thinking to shape our thoughts and our attitudes, but allow your word to allow Christ Jesus, as your Holy Spirit works in us, to allow your truth to shape us and our thinking. Lord, help us not to get lazy with purity. Help us not to allow negativity and dark humour and sarcasm and complaints and criticism to creep in. Instead, help us to be people of thanks. Help us to be a people who look for ways of cutting out any darkness within us and ways to shine gracious, loving light on our brothers and sisters who may need a hand. Lord, help us to be constantly speaking the gospel truth to each other in little ways. That's a prayer or a reminder or a thanksgiving. Help us to do that, Father, so that we do not fall asleep. Lord, help us to get up, to rise from the dead, and allow Christ to shine on us. And it's in his wonderful and good name that we pray. Amen. Before we have some local church messages, we're going to say goodbye um, to our recorded part of our service. And so if you're watching the recording of this service, uh, thanks for being with us. Uh, feel free to uh, share or like this, uh, make some comments in the YouTube channel. Um, if you've got any questions, feel free to log on to our Facebook page and leave them there and we will get back to you. Uh, next week, we're going to speak from our series, Christ and His Church. We're going to explore the idea of being a spirit-filled church. No, not hard liquor, different kind of spirit. So I wonder what that's going to mean, but uh, come back next week and we'll find it. Hope to see you then. Bye.